that's what happened. And Bonga, I just he was you know the thing is with Bonga. What is the thing with Bonga? One day, you know what happened? Because I was getting weird vibes from him, but I wasn't sure. But it is like way before. So I told myself, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not gonna greet Bonga. <laughs> like, and this is this is what this is what happened between me and Bonga. Me and Bonga didn't fight. This is what happened between me and Bonga, ne? I told myself, well, no, man, you know what? Because every day I'm always like, hey, yo, what's up, boss? Because I'm like that, you know, I've got energy. And I like talking shit. And I'll say to Bonga, yo, whatever. And he'll say, he'll reply, we'll have a conversation. And that's just how me and, and him got down. But then I was like, no, man, this guy, I feel like. We will, we talk, but no, no, no. Yeah, the camera is rolling. Yeah, yeah, That's what, fine, let's. What, what, yeah, 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 one minute, one minute. So I went to the office one day, I'm like, I'm not gonna talk to this guy. I wanna see if he's gonna talk to me. Cool, I went to the office. He, he normally came late. Then he sat across me. Busy as fun, busy as fun. He greeted everyone, hi, sure, sure, okay, sure. Didn't say anything. Same thing, second day. Third day, it's a week. Me and Bonga haven't spoken. Second week. It's the third week. And I think oh, third week, that's when he was like, hey, bro, like, but got WhatsApp checks and he mm. sent it to me late at night. I think he was drunk. He's like, yo, are we cool? I was <laughs> like, yo, you know, he was like, what the fuck? What did I do, you know? I was like, no, we cool, you know? But things were, were just never the well, same. Yeah. Because I realized, you know, my friend, because he never talked to me, mm. you know? And I, it's okay. Like, it's like, I made peace with, okay, cool. Maybe this guy, me and him, outside work we don't really vibe and i think that that was the thing because we stayed together for the longest time sometimes you think that like because you chill with someone all the time and and do whatever whatever that you guys are friends friend. you know he was my friend but i wasn't his friend because also like you know he never really he was never really we never really had real conversations with Bonga, you know it would be me telling him like yo bro like yo my family this or this Wait, but, that. but how did you guys go about saying oh let's start this platform together no, so I was so him and Ali were in the same class. Yeah, uh, like as in school. Yeah, in oh, Roseburg okay. College. Uh. So they were graphic. They were studying graphic. They were studying what was it called? Yeah, graphic designer. They were, they were studying to be graphic designers, mm. and I was studying journalism. Mm. So I came to them and I'm like, look, because I saw that they were around the school. They were doing like um, work for students. So for the school rather, they were designing posters for the school. They were doing a lot of like stuff for the school board. Mm. So I came to them like, look, I need a, I need a blog. I need a website. I'm a journalist. I've got this idea. So originally they were like, okay, cool. Um, they're gonna, they're gonna be my service providers. So as we started working, and then obviously like you know, I reviewed more stuff to them because they were involved. They decided like, yo, man, they came to me, they're like, look, we like this idea a lot. It has potential. So mm. we don't just want to be your service yeah. providers. Let's be partners. Let's be partners. And the time I'm like, oh, cool. I've got two more partners who believe in, the, in my vision. Mm. I was cool. Let's rock. Mm. That's what happened. OK. Oh, OK. Yeah, oh, so it I, wasn't like, a, we're friends. Let's do this. No, it was no, more no, no. of you needed a service. Yeah. And then afterwards, it was a matter of um, we are believing the idea. Yeah. Then you guys went on ahead and did, and did. okay, that makes sense yeah, then. Because then yeah. I think I've always wondered, Guti, how it came together because I usually yeah. say, Guti, you guys did a great job to the point whereby I heard of you in the Eastern Cape. I heard of your platform all the way from a Eastern Cape. Mm. And you guys are all the way when I was still in the Eastern Cape. So that's yeah. how good of a job you guys did in terms of the digital yeah. space. But it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Should we start in somewhat some ways? But anyway, all of this yeah. somehow ends up in the pod regardless <laughs> hey. that's why we keep the cameras and the audio yeah. rolling because it really? all ends up there somewhere yeah. somehow <laughs> yeah yeah but listen you know i always wondered i'm like if i want to introduce you how how do i introduce you now because you're the journalist dj and i wanted um i guess now on what you're working on in terms of the the, the platform that you've yeah. decided to create i I, mm. I wanted to kind of know more about it as well since you've transitioned from is yeah. Kipani to yeah. doing your own thing. What, yeah. What's what's the gist of that, by the way? Quick, like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, basically, you know me. My name is Andy Lema Tobera. I was going to introduce you, but hey. <laughs> you know? Andy Lema Tobela. <laughs> just to answer your question. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the, I, I, I say I'm the old school digital content creator. 
like I've been blogging since 2009 and started with Skip Army, which is like a magazine, um, you know, and then in 2020, I sold my shares there because of, you know, I wanted to grow and, you know, the vision was not the same with the guys. Yeah. And um, yeah, so now my focus, I believe that the future of digital content is niche content. So like what you're doing here, which is like mostly like a dance platform, right? So I believe that like, that's the future of digital media. Like, so my focus now is just building like um, niche platforms. So the journalist digital.com is a dance culture platform. Sure. I've got vumanibo.com, which mm. is like a spiritual magazine. And in December, I launched kibizido.com, which is like a business lifestyle magazine. So I'm going to be doing a lot of like um, platforms like that. So, but yeah, you know, also I'm a DJ, you know, um, I play around clubs, whatever. <laughs> I've got music out there. Yeah. You know, so I'm just doing my thing, man. Okay. Yeah. So now officially, I'm confused because I usually have a camera here. So yeah. now I'm like, I need to look somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now officially, welcome to the Side Sessions podcast. I'm chilling with the journalist DJ. That's me. <laughs> with the journalist DJ. I mean, um, I we watch each other's moves. I watch your moves a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I, you were one person. As soon as I thought, you know what? Let's kick off the first episode of the podcast. Let's yeah. kick off 2022. And I was like, who's the best person to sit with, engage mm. with? And I was like, hmm, the journalist DJ. Wow. Why? Because he has all this information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He has all this information. So first of all, I want to say thank you for uh, pulling up mm -hmm. and saying yes to doing the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope we have a good time, which I believe we will. Because yeah, you know, we're chilling, having a good time. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, you know, it's a good vibe. Yeah. yeah, because based on I guess the chats that we've had, it seems as though we are gonna. Mm -hmm flow yeah. if i can put it like that yeah. in any case what how are you doing just to start things softly on the surface <laughs> yeah you know i'm good man you know i'm feeling good um it's uh, i feel like this year it's it's yeah you know every year when, when the year starts we all especially us as creatives we feel like yeah, yeah this is the year mm. you know mm. um, i feel like that every year and i'm definitely feeling like that this mm. year as well so thank you so much for the invite um i'm honored to be here you know uh, i'm watching you as well grow in the industry yeah. you know now you're raising your voice which is important mm. and you're also on the decks and i know you've got music coming out as well so <laughs> shout out to you man hey shout out to us Sh shout out to us <laughs> that was so corny <laughs> <laughs> okay what we're doing today is um we are talking about musical fours as we always do on the show. Mm. So um, we are recapping 2021. Yeah. And we're just going to put everything on the table. Yeah. Uh, having conversations about uh, things that we felt like we wanted to engage with last year. I mean, because mm. I will not count how many times we went. Oh, gosh, I want to engage with someone about this. Mm. And mm. so we're going to be doing all of that today. Just putting it all on the table and I'm mm. so happy that you're here. I don't even I'm know where to start. <laughs> hey, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> Which let's is start. what? <laughs> at the beginning, you know. 2021. Yeah. You know, um, for me, uh, I think we can't escape Ama Piano. Yeah, we cannot. And how dominant it has become and how it has put South African music on the map. And yeah, man, I think that's what we should put a spotlight on. And I'll tell you now that um, <laughs> no, piano has, I, at, like in the beginning, I was just like, what is this, guys? Why are we here? <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> mm, mm. <laughs> but no, um, I can never take away that spotlight that you're talking about yeah, with yeah. putting piano Nyani mm. on, on that map. And do you feel like that was valid? In fact, 2020 was valid, still dominating. Do you feel like they completely did that last year do you feel like somehow we managed to kind of like look at other sounds i think you know you know one thing about south africa and south africans you know myself included is that like as opposed to other countries because we've got so many cultures here you know you can't say what i know you know south africans like this it's always about what's trending you sure. know what i mean at the moment and right now i'm a pianist trending and and for me, what I, what, I, what, what I find interesting is that Ama Piano definitely 
is the dominant um, subgenre of house music in the country and it's the biggest genre in the country and it's also infiltrating like other countries in Africa and internationally as well. But what I found interesting is that the song that made the most of, amount of money according to my, you know, um, research, if I should put it that yeah, way. Yeah, put it like that, research. Know, yeah. It's an Afrotech <laughs> song, which is Osama. Osama. I mean, it's on the Vodacom campaign. Sure. You see you when know. you see when that popped up, I was like, damn, they're coining it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Considering that Afrotech is still uh, a niche, uh, what do I, uh, not platform, it's still a niche uh, genre, culture, genre, culture. subgenre. Yeah. We can say you know genre, that? we can say culture, because yeah, in yeah, both yeah. ways, it's still, it is niche. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So for me, I think, you know, 2021, I'm a piano and Afrotech. Afrotech is just here on Amapiano. It's just here, ne? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people will also argue that, like for me, Osama is Afro with a touch of tech, if I can just mm, say for me. Mm. And a lot of people, I think I was having a conversation asking, how did Osama do what it did? Mm. Like, like, do you, and someone asked me, how, how in, in this, I was like, first of all, we got to a point where we needed to breathe mm. and exhale. Mm. and wanted to receive something new and i guess south africans in at large were like whoo we are breathing mm. but also that video where zakes was performing osama at gunye mm. created a that the, i call it a sketch because mm. it essentially was a movie a sketched movie yeah 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 <laughs> so that, the power of social media eh? yeah the power of social media yeah. exactly but it didn't take away from the fact that Osama's a great song. So mm. we can play Osama even today, even next month, even the couple of months after that, mm. because that's what a great song does. Mm. It creates that longevity. Mm. How it did not make it to song of the year is still puzzling to me. Yeah, you know, um, the thing about song of the year and stuff like that, before you get to song of the year, I just, yeah. I, I just okay. I know I, I'm digressing a bit, it, but... Go ahead. Have you heard su Suka? I was going to put that... Okay. Go ahead. Because no. that was a big chat also in 2020, ne? Yes. Yeah. So, the Suka, which is a band of two guys... Yes. ...released a song called Mano Mano. Um, I'm just, you know, putting this out there for those that may not know. And... It came out before Osama. It just a, it just a couple of months also. Yes. Yes. Because it also came let's, out let's last year. Let's be clear. It came out last year, around March or something like yes. that. Yes. So that song, it sounds very similar to Osama. Does it? Or is it like the flowness of things, which... Does it? I'm challenging you here. Does it? It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Because, I mean... You can tell or no, man, you know, um, Zakes and them and Kasango were definitely inspired by Mano Man. I like that you use inspired. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it happens a lot. You know, even Lama Piano, we all know. Even Lama Piano is Bonibe, they even take they the song. They bite for days. They, you know what I mean? Which, look, I will digress again. Yeah. I will, I must note, remember, um, now, I'm going <laughs> to note, remember, comment on piano biting, but yes, continue. Yes. So, for me, I think that was quite interesting because when you listen to Mano Mano, it's a very spiritual song. It is. Some people will say Osama, okay, Osama is also spiritual, but Z Z what Zakes did in Kasango, they took Osama, right, which is a very deep, very spiritual song, and they made it commercial. They made it commercial. Which for me, I think is genius. Yeah. Because yeah. if you listen to Mano Mano, you know it's, it's a song that you play for hits only. Yeah, for, yeah. You yeah. know, so how they were able to do that, I don't know. It's Zix Mantwini. Let's let's just put that out there. Is it the genius of Zix? It's the genius of Zix. Zix Mantwini mm. is a he's a demigod. Let's be let's be honest. I yeah. got to move. Oh uh, man. Yeah, you know, like yeah, you know, Zix. Zix is the man. You know, I mean, he is Come a on. former music exec. Exactly. You yeah. Know, so he knows. Former. Oh, I thought he still kept that title. But no, 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 no. Okay. He's he was at was it Sony? Was he, Sony yeah, or yeah, Universal? Yeah. No, it was. I think it was Sony. Sony. We'll Universal. confirm. <laughs> One of the two. Yeah. He didn't stay. No, he he, he left. He did. I don't think he even stayed a year. There. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he understands the music business. He does. And that's what I feel. His album also sounds like. Um, his album sounds like a guy that's taking like a niche movement, and he's trying to make it commercial. Whether it's gonna work or not, I don't know. You I know? will. I will say, comment on 
the comment on your comment of mm. the album mm. and say when I listen to it I hear what you're saying it didn't sound like an album to me though it just sounded like singles that mm. were compiled into a project mm. I think for me it would have been better cast as an as, a, as an EP but mm. I guess that's all creatively up to him I guess mm. I mean I'm not saying that the music wasn't good the music was great mm. but I'm just gonna say um, mm. for, as an album for me I didn't categorize it as an album it just felt like he just like pulled yeah. some singles mm. and just put it together mm. which is okay yeah. which is okay which is okay I yeah guess. it's okay yeah Look, before I forget listen I want to I want to go back on that um, uh, piano biting comment because um, as soon as you said that um, it made me think about the time Georgia made a piano song and then oh. there was outrage yeah and I was asking myself why why, mm. why why is the outrage here I mm. listened to that song and I was just like okay I, I, I listened to that song and I was just like okay I hear what you guys are saying but mm. at the same time y'all don't know what creative direction she wanted to do maybe mm. she wanted to put an R&B twist to the piano sound mm. and who are we to say that she doesn't get to produce or make a piano song mm. whereas piano is infamously known to have bitten a lot of house music tracks from the Europeans which mm. by the way is where a lot of our sound is derivative from yeah so when people pulled up and they were making comments like um, she should have gotten a, a local South African piano producer okay mm. sure but what if she didn't want to? <laughs> yeah, and people forget that, you know, creativity flows and, you know, Kanye West exactly. once said that, you know, nobody, like you don't, you can't own creative work. You can't say that, you know, this is my song, this is my movement or whatever. Yeah, you because, can't do that. Because art is inspired by other art, mm. you know, and people that say that clearly do not understand that even the, the the piano movement itself it's inspired by something it's inspired by deep house you know i agree I mean? and guido yeah you know so it's it's a mixture of a lot of elements so yes south africans are the ones that came up with the recipe mm -hmm. but you know like you cannot say that you know people from other countries cannot, cannot. do it mm -hmm. without involving south africans like a typical example is hip hop. There's a hundred percent. You know, good a, example. Imagine if the guys from New York were like, hey, yeah, 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 you shouldn't you, be doing. You guys in Africa can't mess. You with can't be Yeah, you can't be messing with hip hop. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense, man. You know, but the comment of them saying that, you know, also is like, are you are you the boss of the Amma Piano? Hundred percent. Are you? You know. You know what I realized though? Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah. Actual producers mm. of piano didn't engage that much in the outrage that like people that yeah. produce piano i did yeah. i remember seeing a gabza comment i don't remember seeing a basta comment like people i remember seeing a a, 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 a Tuta comment or any of those prolific um, no my producer commented uh but what he said what did he say he said that they are gonna make they are like they're gonna take the song and make their own rendition so he commented he actually posted like a clip uh, uh a clip of like a song but then he deleted it like same time same day so i think i don't know what happened there but he did say um no guys it's fine we're gonna remix the song and make the official scorpion kings one something like that you know but then oh. he, he deleted it and we never heard about it again. again so i don't i'm not sure what happened then maybe he was you know how you're trying to like um fish for a feature Mm. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say he's above or on top of that. No, but sometimes mm. he was just like, ah, let's make it better for you. Let's collab. Yeah, you know, yeah, something yeah. like that. Because I think Davido did this. Davido, who was he saying? Drake. I think it was Drake. Mm. Literally at the awards, Davido mm. was just like, when are we making a song? Oh, I don't know if you saw that. I didn't see that. I yeah. think it was Drake. It's like a couple of years. It's like, when are we making a song? Then you know, mm. I want you on a feature. You know, type yeah, of vibe. Yeah, so yeah. maybe that's what Tamapuris was trying to accomplish, but it didn't yeah. go the way he was wanting it to go. But I stand to be corrected. That's just my opinion. I think it came more from a uh, energy of like, look, let's make it better because a lot of people are commenting on the quality of the song. What about the in, in a what sense, about the quality of the song? No, you know, sometimes like when you make so, you know when something is not i don't want to say original but it's like you can tell or okay these people were listening to music and they try to recreate a song you know what i mean they don't have like the right plugins but don't maybe that's the not right... the sound they wanted to recreate that's that was debatable. my point yeah that was what i'm saying we'll yeah. what if that's not the sound they wanted to recreate what if they mm. wanted to create their own with the inspirations yeah, of the I thing i hear you i hear you that's Aversion. what i was saying yeah yeah. yeah yeah so i think that's what my producer was saying i don't think he was against you know, Georgia making a piano mm. song. You are just saying, 
okay, fine, we hear you, but you know, let's cook it for you proper. It really sounded like a lot of South Africans were like, <sighs> hey, South Africans are trash, man. But you know, we have to understand why because. Um, we've never really had like a pop sound in South Africa that the world had an interest in. Mm. You know what I mean? Like sure, we had Kwaito, which was original, but Kwaito never really had like an international appeal. Bomb did, but I just don't think that they mm. owned it, or they owned it South Africans as. Mm. We didn't own it well enough, I think. Nah, I disagree. I think what happened to Bomb, uh, the reason why it didn't pop the way it was, it was supposed to pop was tribalism. Um, I feel like the guys in KZN and Eastern Cape, because um, remember, like this public knowledge, they said to like Maporisa, for example, they told Maporisa, like, yo, man, don't do gom. This is our song, our song. Maporisa tweeted, tweeted are it. You, are you serious? The Kasa yeah. Nation said that? The guys from, okay, Maporisa didn't say, Tossas or Zulus, he just said the, he guys, said from, the guys, guys, guys from KZN. I think he even said Durban, all right? He tweeted about it, it's there. You can, see, you, can, okay. you can Google it. So, and we also saw it. So what happened is that like, we all know tribalism is a thing in South it Africa. It is. You know, especially from KZN, yeah. we all know. It happens all the time. If you're South African, you'll know this. So, because the sound, also, it was a debate whether it's an Eastern Cape thing or a case of which there. there was such a stupid debate. It yeah. is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but the guys there, you know, there was like a industry thing where they felt like if you're not from that province, you shouldn't be doing the song. You know what I mean? So other guys were like, okay, fine, keep your gom, and that's what happened to gom. Even now, gom is still in the case of and you even in the saying? Eastern Cape. Yeah, even in Cape Town. Yeah, still but there. but that's my thing, Yoba. I guess that disconnect then didn't make the sound as great as it it could have been. Yeah. Because let's be honest, Gom is open that crack yeah. of other countries to look at us. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then piano ran in. Yeah, because of tribalism. Imagine because like, only because of tribalism. And and yeah. your opinion, what you're saying, if I register it, mm. it kind of makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, Mapurisa was jumping and Maporisa, you know is a musical genius. Oh he's a freaking genius. And then yeah. you got Moonchild to and them to make Midnight Stereo. Mm. They were making it commercial mm. for international they were, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. and I think that's what made Beyonce even jump on jump, yeah, jump on, on DJ, DJ leg. leg. You know what I mean? It was because of they they, they were like, oh this son is amazing. Okay, hold up. How great is that? Just two seconds. Beyonce call DJ Leg and say let's work but Anyway, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. No, that's crazy. I was actually interviewing DJ Leg this week um, mm. about that, and um, he was talking about the experience, and then he was saying, you know, um, he, he never actually chilled with Beyonce in the same studio, yeah. but he did get a chance to go there uh, with a production team and mix her vocals, and you know, and all that stuff, and, and Moonchild and Boosie. So, yeah. yeah, so. You know, it was like it was an amazing experience. It should be. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, that that was a crazy. Yeah. You know, but yeah, you know, we'll, maybe Gom will come back. I think I think it will. I think because now the the the, the songs that are kind of doing great when it, I, I call it expensive Gom, mm. um, Puse, oh. Zalatubs is doing great with that. Puse is soft. Puse is bomb. Guys. No, that's Afrotech. No, Puse is not Afrotech. Puse, do 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 I think, I think, I think it's bomb. It's just an expensive bomb. I think it's a mixture of bomb and Afro. It is a mixture of bomb, but that's the thing about South African music. Something is always a mixture of something. It's never exclusively itself. Okay, besides piano, maybe, but at some point, it's never exclusively itself. But to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so, so, I guess that, that's the tech, um, the yeah, tech yeah, spice yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. And Nika Nika, um, Nika Nika as well, by Jala oh. Tugzin. Yeah, yeah, that's I like, also. I like that song. I love that song too. Yeah, I love that song. So, that though, if we continue also in that direction, I feel like we can. We can support DJ Lai because I feel like he's holding the, the umbrella of Gom alone. So maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you know, shout out to him for also just defending his art. You and you all shout out to him big time. Yeah, when those guys will I am and. Um, and, and that, that DJ lady. girl. Yeah. I don't know her name. Ask uh, from Ask 
you know. I'm but not really sorry, but okay. At least they paid him out, you know. They paid him. They, yeah, okay, they good. Paid him, yeah. But did and they pay him and keep the song? I, I don't know what happened, but they did pay him for that. I, I don't know what happened with that song because it just went quiet after that. Yeah. Because I think also we were all, everybody was just like, ah, you guys are fighting, so, you know. But they did because already the song was out. Mm. And obviously a lot of people downloaded the song. Yes. You and, know, so. and, and you know, mm. DJ Legs and his supporters, thank God for his supporters as well. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they yeah. were the ones who were like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they paid him an undisclosed amount of money that is a lot of money <laughs> you say how much yo DJ Lev, how much do they pay you bro it? yeah. it's a lot of money it's a lot of money yeah, yeah, yeah. undisclosed amount that's, that's a lot of money yeah 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 so, <laughs> shout out to DJ Lev. yeah anyway yeah so um, that's what happened to Kong. That's yeah. what happened to Kong. Yes. I'm actually gonna let that simmer in my mind and I think it should simmer in all of our minds as well because mm. I'm all for Kong, man. Like I'm mm. gonna I'm not gonna I don't like how we South Africans do this extremist thing whereby mm. if it's Gom's turn today, it's Gom's turn. If it's yeah. piano's turn to it's if it's hip hop, it's hip hop, guys. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, ways. Yeah, that yeah, shouldn't yeah. be happening. Yeah. That shouldn't be happening. We want them to all coexist. Because they can. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Oskido said it um, you know, on Make G's podcast that the problem with artists is that everybody wants to be number one all the time. So now it becomes difficult to have like an ecosystem where everybody coexists and everybody can still eat because we all want the number one spot and sometimes it has a negative impact on the industry mm. you know what i mean because now people sabotage each other and all that yo i think I think the politics of the industry is what's gonna make us fail mm. especially when it comes i think just to this whole afro tech movement as well because mm. i think there was once a conversation and you know this that it's 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 like it's like said but it's not out there that it's so elitist to some point it's like we all know it but it's do you know when something is out there but it's like not afrotech i'll say it afrotech is an elite elitist movement it is you know? so elitist it's about the cool kids it's about the cool it's about, you know, <laughs> you know, we should, like, you know and i wonder who these who who people who Who's cool enough? Imagine, imagine, wow. And look, everybody has, you know, I don't know, like with music, it's weird because when and when, when a, a subgenre has a target audience, for me, I feel like it's a problem. Cool. You know, so, but it's an elitist movement because the pioneers of the movement want to keep the dope songs for themselves. They mm. don't want to release the I music. I want to release the music. Uh, for the public. And their logic is that, you know, they want to have exclusive sets, which doesn't grow their movement 100%. entirely. It just builds their profiles, right? Because now you have someone um, hogging a song for the whole year and fans, we want the song, but we can't get the song because your set is more important. Mm. It's more important for you to have an exclusive song as then opposed to people listen. driving to the song, yeah. people buying the song on, on, on DSPs. You know, that artist also making money on radio, you know, because the song is on heavy rotation. So now you have like kids who are starving, who are making hot yeah. songs. Uh, they're still staying at KC in the back rooms, but a handful of DJs are playing, are their, playing songs, their music, you know, and it's like, what's, what's happening? What's the point? The movement is not growing. We as fans, we're also suffering, you know what I mean? So if Afrotech is not careful, it's also going to die a very painful death. This is what I said with my um, with the mm. episode I did with Mlu and, and Mzu. Mm. I talked about them. I was like, guys, your take on this Unshazamables chat. Mm. I was like, no, that's not progressive at all. Like, it's not. Kill it. That, that, that whole obsession mm. is not progressive. And then they didn't, I think Mlu didn't understand why I would say that. Mm. Oh, and then I understood he's speaking from a perspective of the, de- of, of, of his performance mm. but i was speaking on the perspective of progression and the audience at large mm. and then i'm i concluded by saying if you're making music as a producer for other djs don't complain about being hungry then yeah and that's the thing you know and that's the sad part it's like 
at the end of the day, you guys, um, the people that make the music don't make money from the music. They, yeah. And the thing, it's a business at the end of the day. It is. You know, it's a business at the end of the day. Everybody needs to eat. For me, how I think exclusive music should be is like, if you have a hot song as a DJ, cool. Have it, have it for like maybe a month or two where it's exclusive. That is also you know my opinion. I mean? Month or two where you have the song, only you play the song, or only you and your friends and play your the friends, song for mm-hmm. a month or two. And then, but release the song after at least two, three months. Also, it must make business sense. It must make business you sense. You know, and people that are always on social media, you know, I said, I never want to comment on their posts, but cool. a lot of DJs on social media will, will be proud that, you know, you can't just sell my song. I know. It. And at that time, I study those guys, right? I look at their moves, I, I, I check if they are being booked. Most mm, of them are not are booked. Not booked. They're not booked. You know, mm. their music is not playing on radio. How are you making money as an artist then? If you're proud that your song yeah, is not accessible. Mm. You know, can you imagine like, like this brand of water saying, yeah, we've got dope water, but you can't get it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're proud to say, yeah. My water's you know, dope, but you can't you get it. You niggas are thirsty. <laughs> I can see. Yeah, I'm so You know, but I'm not going to release and then I, I drink it in front of I, you. I'm like, yeah. In front of <laughs> And then I'm like, yeah. This is good words. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody can, can we can see oh that water looks dope it looks man. dope i would it like so some fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Yeah. and i'm like no <laughs> so, you know i don't want your money you know it's the same thing yeah. with with tech guys it's like it, it doesn't make sense mm. you know it's mm. like what are you doing it's, you know and that's the thing about being cool it's like yeah you know you you end up making stupid moves and then 10 years later you're gonna sit and cry and say yeah hey, you know i'm so underrated I make beautiful music, but you know, South Africa doesn't want to support me. South Africa doesn't want to support me. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that's what happens. So, mm. after tech guys, please stop doing that. Especially the guys that are on the come up. Stop doing that. If you have a hot song, have a strategy, release yeah. the music, submit it to radio, because that's how you're going to make money, you know. Airplay, that's how you're going to make mm-hmm. money. If people love the song and then they request the song, they love the song. Send it. Promoters are oh, wait, no, no, sorry. I, I didn't mean send it, sorry. Because I'm yeah. now thinking from a DJ, because if your song is hot and I'm like, yo, send me the song. Yeah. I recommend Anglish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send us, yes. You know, guys, you want to play your songs, You want to play your songs. You know, send us the music. You know, don't think, you know, I call it like, you know, stomach politics. Don't think about your stomach now for no, man. You know what? If I give this song to a big DJ, he's going to give me 10K. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I can pay rent for two months or whatever the case is. No, think long term. Mm. That's true. I agree. And I'm glad you said that like, yeah. like that, because now I always do say to people, think long term. Yeah. And when I say, because I think also people, um, I, I said that I said exactly what she said as well. Mm. I'm in a complete agreement that music should be for the people. It should move. Yeah. It should move. Because I think like we talked about this, that Osama, they even pushed back the release, like they pushed mm. it and it was like, hey, we need to drop this thing quick because mm. the people want it. Because yeah. their initial release was uh, like, was I don't remember the dates, but mm. then they pushed it and were like, ah, we need to drop this thing Yeah, quicker. so I think it was supposed to drop, it was supposed to take four weeks and mm. then it took two weeks. Mm. Because normally when you ingest a song, uh, DSPs take about four weeks, yeah, they to, took in, four weeks yeah. to ingest it properly. So, oh, but I mean, if, if, if you've got, you know, if, if your know, people can see or this song the song, song yeah you know they can make an exception because they're thinking i i'm gonna make money here already and mm-hmm. i think that as creatives that's something that you only consider long term hey i'm gonna make money mm-hmm. when i make money no guys don't mm-hmm. starve we are not starving anymore <laughs> yeah the music the music business is tough already man don't make it's it already tough, tough for yeah because you want to be cool yeah but it's already ex- tough. exclusive nonsense mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah. now i'm thinking based on that that whole conversation we've as clearly established that osama did make a great wave for 2020 2021 20 i'm yeah. living in the past yes yeah, 2020 yeah, in my depression. intro i said 2022 right not 2021 i think you said 2022 hopefully yeah right. in such 2022 there yeah, <laughs> correcting it now, so. so now what what other let me say music pops up in your mind i don't want to say like singles because singles like yo there was a lot of music that was dropped last year. A lot of there music was like dropped tons last year. of music and a lot of dope music. A lot of dope music. A lot of dope music dropped in 2021. 2021. Yeah, but for me um, personally, I enjoyed. Um, I think 2021 for me was a big year for deep house. 
you know. Let's okay. Can I say something about that? Quick. I feel like every year is a big year for Deep House. The thing is, Deep House is not loud. That's the thing about mm. it's not loud. Like, mm. and that's why I think that it's always a big a big year. If whether it's commercial, mm. that's like. It's it's like it's not their target market to be mm. commercial. So when it's commercialized, it's even better yeah. for it. Yeah. But it has its own lane of not being loud. But when it's commercialized, even better for them. Yeah. So to answer your question, what stood out for me with songs? Mm. There's a lot of deep house songs. There's a guy called Chronicle Deep. Yo, that guy dropped fire projects. You know. Chronicle Deep is the guy. He, he dropped fire, fire projects. Um, uh, China Chameleon as well. Mm -hmm. uh, dropped fire projects in 2021. Those, those two guys really stood out for me. But there were other guys as well, you know, there's the vinylist who is like, um, I think it's indie as well. Also dropped, uh, dropped fire projects. Uh, so who else in the Deep House community that I felt last year? Yeah, I think I think those three, those top three for me now, top of my head, mm. were dope. Um, I'm a piano, obviously. The songs that stood out for me was Inquisio by Mass Music and Baba Alo. You know that song? Uh, it's an intro song so on, here's the on, thing on about, Mass Music's album. Yeah. So here's the thing about me and piano. Mm. I don't touch it. At all? At all. Ah. I osmosis listen to it at the club. Mm. You know what, man? I don't touch it at all. But there are some vocals that are fire that I would love to get. <laughs> you, need, you know, I'm a, I'm a honest, for me, it's a, it's a lot like Deep House. You know, the one that I, okay. Like mid-tempo, deep. Like, there's Private School, I'm a piano, which is the one that I'm kind of like drawn into. Mm. You know, which sounds like Deep House. Mm. Um, Kelvin Momo, for mm. example, that guy, like his album mm. is dope. I can agree to that as well. I mean, I yeah. won't like there is music Nyan Vele that I will not deny was good. Yeah. But don't let me my statement of saying that um, mm. I don't touch it make yeah. you think that there's some music that I don't go crazy over. Mm. Definitely there are there is music that I do crazy. I go, I go crazy, crazy over. over. Uh, I, like, like I, I said, through osmosis in the club. <laughs> ah, okay, I feel you. I feel you. And then also tracks that, that stood out for me um, was obviously Kelvin Momo, uh, Mass Music. Um, uh, who's this guy? Uh, you know Gabba Canal? Gabba Canal, no. Gabba Canal. I will know Gabba Canal though. Deep Ama Piano guys as well. Dropping beautiful music. He's got a, a song called Midnight Sun. Mm -hmm. Now I promise if you love Afro Tech, you're gonna love that song. If you know it's piano, listen to Midnight Sun by Gabba Canal. Dope project. Obviously, you know, Osama. Deep Narratives also uh, dropped a dope project last year in the Afrotech scene. I think it was an anticipated project, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah you know. Um, Kusu, did Kusa drop last year? They did, Singles, man. I don't think they yeah, dropped yeah, any singles. Dropped, yeah, yeah, they dropped uh, Nice Me and a Singles last year. Mm -hmm. Sanel, obviously. Obviously. You know. You, you see Sanel, no? Mm. Sanel... <laughs> Sanel is... <laughs> Sanel. Mm. Sanel makes music for radio, and that's what he does. Mm. But... If you listen to the music, is it does it sound commercial? That's the, that's my point. Mm. As for how, because I feel like that concoction that mm. I would really love a lot of young Afro Afro tech producers to kind of get when it comes to making music for radio, mm. he somehow has perfected it. Yeah, and hey, like he's he's perfected it. Mm. There is no year where we can say we haven't heard a Sanel musician song on the radio on a top something playlist. Mm. So that man is powerful. I says, can you imagine the, the amount of money he's making? That's with Samro? I'm try I can imagine. It's a lot. I hope, yeah. yeah send, send, send an e wallet, nya. yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know. Tweet there, like go hey, back e wallet. Sanel, you know, and you know what I like about Sanel? He's so humble about mm. it. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, he's not out there. You know, you won't see. We don't know his lifestyle. We don't know. We don't I, know I, I, I don't lifestyle. know what car he drives. I don't know where he stays. You know, there's a rumor that he's dating my crush, Simi, but you know, we don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Simi, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Simi. So yeah. Uh, anyway, okay. Let me wrap up my question because I feel like I'm just going on and on. So it's Anel. Um, you know, Gala Chagzin. Oh, Chagzin. Have you heard "I See You" by Sanel and and, and Chagzin? Not yet. Ooh. It's it's. 
Yo. I have not yet because I remember they were just collaborating, so yeah. which means somehow I missed the release. There's a song called I See You. Ooh. Beautiful song. Okay. Beautiful song. Um who else released? Yeah, a lot of guys here. Like a guys. lot of them. Yeah, yeah. But dope music from the dance culture community. Um I'm a piano, Afrotech, Deep House, even commercial even house. Co- you know? I wonder what com- what com- what is categorized as commercial house. Master KG. Oh flip, that's commercial. That's it's, commercial. It's commercial, isn't it? Yeah, Master KG also released some dope he stuff. Did, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He released he released a song with um Makati. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. You know it's commercial if Makati's in it. Yeah, yeah. It, Shout Makati out to Makati, you know. Yeah. Uh Kanama. Kanama rather also like a dope commercial song mm. Mm, did very very well because you know what i wanted to also do like mm. um since we're also on that chat i have like a list of like spotify data mm. that kind of um puts together the top 10 most streamed um i've got different lists actually mm. so i just wanna let me start with the top 10 most streamed south african artists we've got dj mapores on number one damn i thought it was gonna be Kamsa. Really? Yeah. He's number two. <laughs> well. uh, he's number two. This list is actually not surprising. Dem Tuta, you're sorry, Basta 929 is number Ooh, three. Of course, how can I forget? You Basta. know Basta, ne? Basta and Dem Tuta. Those are my two favorite Ama Piano producers because they make Ama Piano sound so classy but so dope. You know why I like Dem Tuta? Yeah. He's got Afrotech elements going on in yeah. his music. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Something about their drums, man, you know. So, yeah. They've got that classy feel, you know. So oh. I actually interviewed Basta and I'm like, yo, what is it about your music? And he's like, he's influenced a lot by Kwaito. So he oh. references Kwaito. So that's why, like, you know, his kicks, his drums are like that. Because South Africans, we like that bass. We like the bass. Yeah, we like yeah. the drums. So yeah, we like it's the drums. Cool. Yeah. So, them two times on number four. Definitely deserves it. Definitely. Mr. Jazzik on number five. Do you, do you recall Jazik. anything? Do you recall his project from from last year? Yeah, Jazik released. Um, I was actually at the launch party with the English. Yeah, he the, did the one where he's wearing like a, a suit and there's a horse. Mm-hmm. Party released. with the English. <laughs> yeah, it's called like Party with the title. English. You know, uh, um, okay. criticized a lot that project, but it has that song with Buche. What's a song? Awesome. Woza, yes. Woza. Woza. Oh, that's yes. a Mr. Jazzic tune. Yes. That song is huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it has, it has, that project has that song. I thought it was a 2020 song. No, no, no. It oh, dropped it's a 2021. I think it was released. It was about uh, three or four months before. And oh, and Killer Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in the video. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They're in the video. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Also, that ish. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. 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 And rest in peace to yeah. Killer Kau. Rest in peace, yeah. That was also heartbreaking. And Mpura. Yeah. That was, you know, that was heartbreaking. Big loss to the yeah. industry. 100%. Then Joya <laughs> Celebration is on number six. I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised, low key as well, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm in the Joyo Celebration community, just so mm. you know. Huh? Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, the gospel community. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I'm in the gospel yeah. community. I've just I haven't heard as I have, I, they haven't been as loud, but I mm. guess that's the gospel community for you, that yeah. you will stream even their old projects. From I don't back mess in the with day. gospel at all. Okay. All, I'm like, not gonna ask why, cause like it's a religion. Yeah, everybody has their own thing when it comes to religion. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Talk about music now. I probably has like I, I've got like maybe three songs that you fucks with with yeah, gospel. gospel. Yeah. What are those three songs? Do you know? Yes, Is I know. Is oceans there? <laughs> 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 it's Ocean's Gospel. Yes, it is. It was a little song, Worship. That's a gospel song, Ocean's. It's Ocean's there. They no. did a bomb remix. <laughs> no, no, it's not there. It's not there. Um, I like Beats All Like by Amato Danasi Wesson. Okay. You know, I don't know. I just like, it's not a kick, you know, because it's, what is that thing that they do? Like, that instrument, musical instrument. Which one? The symbols? One, the one, the, symbols. The, the one, the, the pair. Of no, 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 no. Like a young someone, and I was like, a tambourine. 
Boop. That that what is that? Bible that that box thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that thing is. Yeah, what is that thing? I don't you know. know. Please, it if you like know, please pillow. link below. It looks like a pillow. <laughs> looks like a pillow. A small thing in a pillow, but with like leather, <laughs> you know. And yeah, but it bangs. Eh? It I just because I like Amrotek. I like that chick. Boop that that. Boop. You know, I'm like damn. I'm thinking about Nicola. a bit. Nicola. <laughs> I'm like damn. This song is going in. <laughs> Going in, you know, I like that song a lot actually. I'm thinking of a video whereby there was a girl, she's turning up to yeah. that school pool. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's gonna that... turn up. I like that song. Mm. What are the two? Do you remember the two? Um, there's a song by Benjamin Duba called King on the Cross. I don't know if that's the name, if it's called that. Mm. I like that song, and I forgot the other one, man. I forgot it. I forgot it. I forgot the other one. It's fine. Let me continue. I'm almost done. Oh, I digress. Ah, and that's why I have this <laughs> to yeah, yeah, remind so, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Nasty C on number seven. Uh, we've got Makazi on number eight, which I guess I thought she'd be higher than Joyous Celebration yeah, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. But and I, her audience is not on Spotify also. True. Yeah. Funny enough, though, I'll tell you, her album is on the top ten. Mm. I think, but I'll confirm now. And then we've got who's at April? Because they're on number nine. April. A P P E L. A P P E L. Oh, April. forgive me for not knowing because they are number Aye, nine. Namangas. Forgive me for not knowing. We'll Apple. research it. Apple. Aye, Apple, I don't know. And Apple. then A Reese is on number 10. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Shout out to Reese. All the time. So not to Reese. All the time. I just want to put it out there. All the time. That um, I've known Reese since he was in high school. I, I'm just saying. All the time. Shout out to Reese all the time. That, that guy has a cult following. Yeah, yeah. Is what I, I call it. Yeah, I know. Cult following. Reese fans are crazy. Yeah, they're wild. Yeah. They're wild. So wait, let me let me go to... But Reese, you must do interviews, Chief. You know, I get it. It's like, I get, I get it. Like, you know when you're like in like a creative bubble and you're just like... Loki, for all we know, they make him anxious. <laughs> uh, nah. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I don't you know. have access to Aries, so you must get Aries here. I'll see. I'll, 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 I'll think on it. <laughs> yeah. She, guys, all the Aries fans, what are they called? I don't know. What are they called? If you want an Aries interview, size your call. Please don't say that because now people are going to be pulling up thinking that they're gonna pull up wanting Aries no, to be on the though, pod. It's true. It's true. <laughs> because you know, uh, the rest of us, we can't, we can't even, you know, we don't have access to Aries. How to? Okay, let me not ask how, because my beans are gonna be spilled on this whole table. Mm. Anyway, uh. top ten most streamed South African mm. <laughs> tracks. <laughs> Let's hear. So number one, Umsebenz Wait. Makes sense. Number two, John Wick Demtuta. John, to be honest, I don't really like that song. Why? It just doesn't speak to me. Woo! I feel like it's a fire song. But I understand why people like it. It's a dope beat, fire title as well. The video is also decent. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I don't remember the last time where I went online to look for videos of music. Yeah, so them two that they were very I like them two those videos, you know, because they're not like typical girls in bikinis or party scene, you know, it's always like him being a like I almost said a bad bitch. Him, <laughs> <laughs> him cause like you know, him being a bad boy, you a know. <laughs> no, because I was like, you know, no shade them to the no shade, man. By the way, unrated news, he also doesn't do interviews, right? Yeah. And my com my former company, because I was there, we were the only people that ever had an interview with them to that, I'm just saying. It's your former company, come Nan. Yeah, so so now your current my must current make company a plan. is also gonna get them to the, you know what I mean to I, yeah. I, I get why these producers don't wanna be in front of the camera to be honest with you because okay number one besides the fact that we need them they don't need us debatable. but also we need yeah, each other debatable. we need it. for them I, I guess I get it sometimes whenever as a creative also there's that thing you but you don't want to expose yourself to you want to expose mm. yourself to a certain extent i get it as a creative because sometimes i don't feel like doing a lot of the interviews and i realize damn i need mm. this interview yeah 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 so yeah there's I, also I, that I, I think it goes both ways because also i mean you as a creative you you have a right to say to to 
whoever you 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 talk to to say look i don't want to talk about this i don't want to talk about one two three i want to talk about one two three you know what i mean to a, to a certain level you understand so and also fans need to know what's going on but also a lot of interviewers ask a lot of ridiculously stupid questions so maybe that's why also they s try to stay away because a lot of them do they'll ask you basic questions like okay so please tell us about how you grew up or please tell us about yourself mm. so mm. i'm just like you can like no mm. i no. it depends man i mean if, if it's an up-and-coming artist but that's different we're talking about these oh okay you yeah but I, I i hear you i hear you but a lot of these guys don't want to do interviews because they just don't want their personal stuff their personal out stuff out there and mm. i think that would be the main one they just yes. don't want their personal stuff out there yeah. which is understandable yeah which is understandable we've got izolo on number three is my jam yo. oh i love that, I now love that's an afro tech the, song I d maybe that's why i love it so much come on let's be let's let's be real i'll izolo. go back and listen to the sonics listen to that song izolo is afro tech on, a on slow, like a slow BPM, slow no? BPM, I'll go listen to it and listen doom, to the song. Doom, doom, doom. But I love, I love Dali Wonga's flow. On the song. I love Maporisa, guys. Maporisa raps like a couple of rappers yeah, could yeah, learn yeah. something from Maporisa. That Actually, flow it's, also. It's Maduman, it's not Maporisa. Oh, thank you. Yes, Maduman is flow. Maduman is flow. <laughs> it's crazy on that. It's game. crazy because yeah. for me that's the one thing that stood out. I was like. Mm. Yeah, 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 it's a tongue twister. It's a no, 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 no. out of respect, though. <laughs> okay. Hello, my body is with the flow. No, yeah, my Dumane with the flow. Yeah, my with the flow. <laughs> and then we've got Banyana DJ Maporisa. Actually, look, but which one is that one? Uh, is it that? I think that one goes like. Oh, is it? Yeah, it has okay. to be that one. Okay. It has to be that one. Okay. Yeah, it's also a big song. And then Lia Shona by Quish. Lia Quish, Shon. Yeah. Quish, Quish and them two Okay, cool. Yeah, I love that song. You know that song is... I do, for yeah, sure. Yeah. The club, Dros Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I love... You know that song for me? I like how well it's written. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a very... It's a beautifully written song. Okay, please sing it again so I'm sure which one it is. Ah, you know, don't put me on the spot, man. It's You've been on the spot. You've been humming songs. Like, don't act fresh now. You can speak it, it's fine. No, I don't know Zoom, that's a thing. Okay. I know it when it plays. It's Quish, SA. No, no, them two does not understand. It's Quish. No, no, no. It's it's a Quish SA with uh I know a Jelix also there as well, but he's not like the main vocalist. There are two vocalists on the song. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it's a dope song. <laughs> dope song. We've got Vulam Lomo by Musa Kiza number seven. Very creative song. I think I feel like that song changed. Which one is Volam Lomo? Coco. Chica, chica, that chica, is a creative song. Penny Kali. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And he kind of like invented like a, a style. Because mm. a lot of songs, people have now started doing these crazy sounds and songs after that. You know what I mean? Because he was the first one to go like. Chica, chica, like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Coco. That, that's the song. I know I know the song, but I don't think he was the first one who just decided to go no, and, and okay. add no, lip I, like that. The on. first one that I heard was him. He okay. was the first person that I heard, yeah. Okay, we've got Waza by Mr. Jazik on number eight. Yeah, it's the one that we spoke about now with Bougie. Waza. Um, the one ba, ba, on part, part two with the English. I think Piano's dominating this Spotify list. Of course. Of course. Ma, ma Pula, Buster 929. Oh, I love that number song. Nine. Which I one is that song. one? Damn. Mabula, yeah, I love. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone love. Is that that one? Yeah, that's what we are doing. Guys, no, you're creative. Shout hey, out to, yo, shout out no to ways. Zoo. You're creative. Zoo for writing that song. It's a beautiful song. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when that bass kicks in, yeah. then. <laughs> It's too much. And is like pasta and ketchup. Hey, pasta and ketchup. Hey. Guys, you're creative. No, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Shout out to my piano. No, don't, you're creative. Don't. No ways. Don't. And then number ten, Siam Tanda, Casper uh, Vest and Bootle. Oh, mm. the controversial. The song. controversial song. You know the Bob Sinclair melody. It is the Bob Sinclair Whoa. melody. Need hold on. It is. It is. It future. is a boxing clip. Yeah, yeah, so I don't yeah. know why also it became such a, a a a conversation between the two of them or just in general because it is also number one. Let's start here. A Bob yeah. Sinclair melody. Yeah, I mean, but that's what Amapiano does though. Like, a like, lot of the time, no? They reference 
you know what you know what i'm up you know like the formula for i'm a piano djs and the trend in 2021 is that these guys studied um classical house music yes. right the classic hits and then they took the melodies and then they rewrote the songs yeah. in the neck like that song there's a lot actually i just can't remember them at the top of my at my head but there's, yeah, there's a lot of heard in the club a, yeah, yeah there's a lot you know where they just like you know just you know i guess um reuse melodies and whatever it works people don't care <laughs> people don't care it does work it's just for me just just make a whole new song because it kind of says do i trust myself enough but what am i trying to such a thing as a whole new no, song no I, there isn't but tr yeah. tr try try to to how to reference not bite just yeah try. it shouldn't be obvious yeah try to reference not bite Number but it's, it's a cheat code that works because like it plays because what do you want you just want you just want to be famous that's all then you just want to be popular you're not trying to you're not making it for us you're making it for yourself and I you're just trying to be working. popular what it's your turn then it worked of course it's working it's working it's gonna work because the song works world hold on works that nah. is one of my most played songs of 2020 when were we gigging guys <laughs> 2000 and uh recently 19. though because i brought that song back recently and a lot of the time i realized damn i've playlisted that song at gigs mm. and it and causes I, people obviously respond positively because it also you know what i mean it's a melody that plays in your head yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it's gonna work 2021 was filled with a lot of great music and a lot of great releases so we took to the pod party to find out what exactly were your favorite drops from 2021. Let's see what she had to say. Hi, this is Lady Lebu and the project that stood out for me was the Ed Soul project, Never Let Go. And the song that stood out for me in 2021 that I most played was um, Ed Soul, Change the World. That was so, so, so epic. It was the epic song for me. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Uh, my name is Zanele. Um, I'm an artist, a vocalist. Yeah, I come from a small town of um, uh, Eastern Cape, Queenstown. Yeah, so music is my life. I breathe, I sleep music. Music is everything to me. Um, but mostly, like, for the past year, I've been indulging on Msaki. I love Msaki. Msaki is everything. I love her sound. I love her voice. Her unique voice. Like it, 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 it captures me. Um, especially her song with uh, Sun L, Ubo Me. That song, it speaks to me. Like it's so deep. Yeah. So like basically, Msaki has been my at most you know artist for me yeah so um also I'm, I'm a recording artist but i haven't put out anything in like four years now um i have a couple of singles that are gonna be dropping very soon um so look out uh you can catch me and follow me on uh instagram um at i'm um, official zane one and then on uh, Twitter as well, same, I'm official. I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for the Facebook lovers. I love you guys. Yeah, but I've taken a break. But soon, soon, I'll be coming back. Yeah, thank you. Hey, what's up, good people? It's your boy, Tribe Franco. Um, so the song that stood out for me in 2021 was Chelete, which is my song featuring King Munada. And the project that stood out was uh, Marcus Harvey, You Still Don't Know Me. It was a brilliant EP and I think the, the guy's on another level, so yeah. Hello, hi guys, this is Butle Kayamba, aka Miss B, your girl, your DJ. Um, the one project that stood out for me in 2021, it's definitely, no, there's actually two. One, playing alongside DJ Fresh. And then the second one is me releasing my single, Time to Fly. This is a DJ Bawa Big 3, originally from PE, but I'm rocking this side in Kauteng now. Uh, for me, man, the most hip and happening house albums that I've experienced in 2021, it's uh, the Chima Music Project, Artwork, 
Sculpture Music, Oscambo and the Tune Chasing. And those guys have kept South Africa running, my man. And thank God for blessing us with those guys. And I hope we'll keep growing as a South African house artist. Blessed. Hello, hi, my name is Buntle Tladi. Um, the project that stood out for me uh, last year was my sister's single. And the single that stood out for me was Mali Tinasi Funi Mali by Zex Bantuni. Yay! Okay, yeah. so that was number 10. So quickly on the top 10 most streamed South African albums. Who's Rian Rhea, Benaf? A Spawn 10? Rian Benade. That sounds Afrikaans to me. Yo, Rian, shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you, Rian, for hitting oh, number one, bro. Oh, can Joe Nima, Ray? Can Jay Vat? Can Jay Vat? Yes, no more. But, but, but say ye. Like Prat Afrikaans, no. Like Prat Afrikaans. I say Rian, on swear Joe, on say Joe Music. Slacker. Shout out to you, Rian. Yeah. I, how do you say? I don't even know how to say shout out to you, Rian, in Afrikaans. Um, um, dot C's. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm not I'm laughing. That's, that's what it means. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. I actually even know that's not what it means. Yeah, no, that's not. What it means. Uh, number two, before now by Blackie. Shout out to Blackie. Shout uh, out to Blackie. Sh sh shout out to Blackie. Shout out know? to Blackie. And you know, shout out to Blackie for trying to to carry to sing in Zulu. Wow. Shout out to him. Trying. I mean, like I, Blackie is like for me. I feel like you know when someone sings Zulu but in an English accent, I never understand that. You know. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, at least. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. You know, you're not, you're trying to be like, okay, cool. I'm Zulu, guys. When Nasty C started rapping in Zulu, how did that sound for you? I think Blackie is doing it better than Nasty C. Cool. Oh, all yeah. right. Shout yeah. out to you, Blackie. <laughs> um, yeah, number sure. three, this one, I don't know if I can say surprise me, but it's, it, yeah. Ooh. Today's tragedy, tomorrow's memory, the mixtape Aries. Number three. Ah, Aries again with the numbers. Again with the. Did you see his streams on Spotify? I think it's over a million, no? No way over Ten. that. Oh, way over How that. Much? If I'm mistaken, about 40 million streams on Spotify. On Apple Damn. Music, sorry. On, on Apple, Apple Music. Music. Damn. Damn. Damn, Reese. Damn. Damn. But Reese, hey, Chief. Now I wanna hear, I wanna hear Reese spit in, in, in Sipitori. I think that would be fire, hey? Yeah. No, no, no. But I think I think the new the new project with with Jody. He does. Just listen to it and see if he doesn't today. I, I heard it, but I was busy, you know. Go back to it and see if he does, and then let me know. Uh, and and yo, PJ, I'm sorry, man. I'm gonna listen to your project, bro. <laughs> like, I've just it's been hectic, man. A life, ne? Yeah, it's been hectic, bro. I need to actually actually today. When we leave here, I'm gonna listen to that project. I've got so much. Like I understand what you're saying because music. There's yeah. a lot of music, guys. Yeah, let's, yo, let's just yo, be honest. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of music. So number four, undisputed volume two, past the nine to nine. Whoa, fire, 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 fire. Okay. Damn, eighties, but also I understand. I. Uh, Bastards fans are not necessarily on Spotify. On Spotify, mm. Makazi Kokova. Oh no, in Shivenda, that is Shivenda. What is she? She, you know what? I don't wanna lie. Because I don't think it's Kokova. It could be something else. There's a difference Excuse between me. Tonga and Venda. There is. Tong yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Makazi, I'm sorry, man. We love know. you, Makazi. Shout Genuinely. Out you. Shout, shout out to you. Shout out to Makazi. Our African Queen Makazi right after. Makes sense. And then Subconsciously by Black Coffee. And then Party with the English, Mr. Jazzico, number eight. Mm, makes sense. Number, this is why we don't know April. Hart Verkender man. Yeah, I know. So, Apple, Leicester Rime, bro. Steer Joe, Joe Misiki, so man, it's for Leicester. Hey, it's for Leicester. Shout out, shout out to you. I hope yeah. I'm saying it right. Apple. A yeah. Apple. 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 Maybe it's French. Maybe oh, it's the we French know. Africans. I don't know. <laughs> These niggas, I don't know. Number 10, to the world and beyond, Sanel musician. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. I'm glad because I remember I remember saying, Kuti, there's no Sanel, there's no year where Sanel is not making a list somewhere. Yeah. There's no yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, it's very consistent. Yeah, very consistent. So yeah. for me, I think having said all of this, for me, 
out of all the releases that were dropped in 2022, 20, mm. 2021, the one that I can say stood out and I play on repeat, Arcade Citizen Deep. Oh. He, for me, yeah. that is the one album I listen to. And this is the one album. I mean, you mentioned all of them, the ones I could have also mentioned. You mentioned the EP with uh, the deep, narr with deep narratives. You mm. mentioned Chronicle Deep. So those were also on my list as well. Um, Kai and the Soul as well. He dropped an EP and that was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Kai and the Soul. So for me, Citizen Deep, I mean, and it's an album from the intro. I was just like... So how do you feel about the song that has a lock drum? Which one? I don't... I'm probably not... Gonna there's a song feel there, some type of way about it because I love every song on the on album. The, that which like, one? I just I didn't felt, notice I, if it has one, and notice. I have no problem. <laughs> there's a song there that has uh, a love drum. It's actually sound like piano, but on mm -hmm. a R&B tip because it, it was very experimental. Maybe it's that very album. yeah. Maybe it's, it's it's on like a it has this because that album he was very experimental on that yeah, album, and I like that he did that because yeah. he can easily put all of those songs on radio. Yeah, High yeah, key. Yeah, yeah. He was very experimental. Shout out to Citizen Deep. Hi, Key. You can put it on the... I should have him on the pod, actually, very soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to shout out to Citizen Deep, man. So for me, that was that was the album. And on my, like, I can just play it in the car, yeah, driving. Yeah, it's, it's a dope album. Also, I love the Loved artwork it. as well. Yeah. He put a lot of effort... For his um, debut album. Yeah, yeah. He put a lot of effort. Mm. You know, I could tell that, you know, he put his heart and soul... Heart and soul, rather, in the into project. Into the project. Yeah, so shout out to Citizen Deep. I caught his set at um, UR. Uh, uh, the other week, so dope set as well. No, I haven't been to you. Are dope vibe, dope environment. I can see. Yeah, dope mm. vibe, dope environment. Mm. Yeah. So, what are we looking forward to this year? That's gonna be very but, hard. Yeah, to you even must answer. go there. You must uh, when you go to your you must make sure that uh, um, you know you your budget is on point because booze expensive. They don't they don't sell. I swear, I thought everything is on hospitality. No, no, no. They don't sell bu uh, beers, is it, ciders. Is it still invite only? Yes, so okay, you register cool. and then... Oh, you, you register. A, yeah, you register. They've got like a... Hey, Shimza's team is smart, ne? He's got an agency. Yo, they are smart, nah. Shimza's got an agency, so I mean, high level, thank you. Yeah, very high level. Yeah, so when you go to UR, cheapest bottle is a thousand bucks, just saying, you know. I don't even drink alcohol, so that'll be awkward. You don't drink alcohol? No. Damn. I did not know that. A lot of people are going to pull up on me saying, claiming with videos that I drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. Because <laughs> I recently made a confession. Mm. That this, mm, ish people posted some videos of me commenting and confessioning. It's not like a big deal. It's just that I said I tasted alcohol on my birthday. And I um, drink cocktails now. Cocktails are nice. So if I feel uh, but like... But alcohol almost. Yeah, but I don't drink alcohol. Like, I don't feel like... It's just like when I feel like it cocktail i'm like oh can i have a cocktail so you know you, you know you, you you don't drink all the time no i don't even drink at all i barely even but the cocktail is alcohol okay i drink cocktails then oh okay okay you're not gonna get cocktails that you are anyway the point is that i'm not gonna get drink. cocktails that you are i must bring a bottle with money i thought you were on silent i also even had alcohol in a few months my few months should i high five you should i high five you is yeah, that yeah. an accomplishment yeah <laughs> i've had alcohol since november Okay, so yeah. noted about you are ish. You are. I haven't. I haven't been out. Yeah. But the times were by. I think I could. I was interested in going. I had mm. gigs. Mm. So, yeah. Still go. Check it out. I, I think if register. You play, if you play Afro tag, you can go. No, definitely, Galu, because I do. Yeah, just, Afro is my yeah, playground. Yeah, you must go as a fan. Also, yeah. Just to yeah, yeah, yeah. The go. funny thing is that most of the people that they've featured there, I've mm. already. Internet. I know them. Not yeah. interview, but I I know them. Yeah, so like I, I know mean, them sonically. Like I go to their sets. You get me? I've heard. Oh, so for yeah, me, yeah. as soon as they put someone, I have not. You know, I'm like, oh. Oh, I hear what you mean. You get already, Edward on you are. They already, should get Edward on you are. Oh, Edward, yes. They should get Edward on you are. Yeah. Edward, I will never forget his set. He introduced his set in 2000. Yo, I don't even remember. Introduced me to Chronicle Deep. Oh, really? His, yes. In yeah. I don't know a couple of years ago. I don't know yeah. when. I will never forget Edward said at um, Carfax Spiritual. I will never forget it. Yeah. I'll cool. never forget. He, yeah, That's he cool. did introduce me. So, Edward, as soon as you place people that I've heard his, I'll definitely go for Edward again. Who are your favorite DJs, like, that, live sets? That's a hard question. But at the top of my mind, I can say Sanal. 
Mm, really? Yeah. You. When Redford? when he was yes, when he was playing at deep in the city, uh. I just watched him. I think I was there. I watched him. I I, I watched him. I found it so. I watched him, so I li I liked oh, okay. watching and listening to him. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. a very hard question, actually. I'm not gonna lie to you. And when yeah, I yeah, 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 um, yeah, that's a good question, bro. <laughs> it's a hard question. I think it's it's only black coffee for you. It's yeah. a very hard question. Life, like a a person that can play a live set, and I'm like, wow. Oh, Enonapa performs the hell out of a crowd as well. I guess a lot of people do love I watching him. I haven't, yeah, I saw a video where he was performing that uh, track, the remix, and they are, uh, mm. and then he was like doing a whole thing with people. He's. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Uncle Waffles is putting pressure on niggas now to dance. No, but he's always been. Oh, yeah, energetic. And can we not say statements like Uncle Waffles came up with dancing while no, no, DJing? No, 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 I'm not saying, I'm oh. saying pressure. Oh. And that's true, actually. She put a she put a lot of pressure on a lot of people. Because yeah. I remember when I was playing in Polokwana, I realized that the girls that were playing before mm. me, they felt this need to prove themselves. And it's just like yes. Yeah. And I was just like, Ish, need to relax. But I think Lamise came with that. Lamise is the one that Booty, I was also always been she did. She's always yeah. been dancing. And it's not like a thing that's always we've mm. always just been, been dancing, dancing on the yeah, decks. Yeah, it's because yeah, music yeah, is yeah, so yeah. good. You yeah, just want to I move. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you, I feel yeah, you. Yeah, it's we've I was, always I was playing at Kitchener's last week and um someone said to me, Why aren't you dancing? And I'm like, because I'm not a dancer. Because you're not a dancer. I don't I, I can't dance in gym. Imagine, why aren't you yeah, dancing? And I'm like, Damn, Uncle Waffles. People need to relax. You know what <laughs> That's I mean? what I like, do. They need to relax. But shout out to Uncle Waffles, man. She's so cute. <laughs> she is. Why did I laugh at that? She's very pretty. I don't know. Not that I don't think she's not. She's gorgeous. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Not that I think. It's just that the first thing you'd say mm. is that she's so cute. That is, is so. No, she is. But that's so man of you, man. <laughs> Can't you say something else? Like, like she is like cute. how you love her sets. I've never heard her sets. Okay. I've only seen she, that clip on social then. media where she is doing the. By the way, the, that clip made Adi Wede ten times yeah, bigger than it, it should did. have been. You it know did. what I mean? Mm, yeah, because it, it was so cinematic. Who well, I think whoever took that video had a vision. That nigga needs a hundred k from Uncle. It, it was it was a, it was a public person's video. It wasn't like yeah. from management or from the team or yeah. anything like that. Oh, the way that video was shot, mm. you know, it was like. And then she's like, and then it goes to the crowd. Oh my God. Okay. He would agree that like, it was, Uncle Waffle's thing was well shot, ne? The, the, the clip that went viral. Anyway. Shout out to Uncle Waffle's. Shout and the person that took the video. If I was that person, I would say, yo man, you must so pay me. must pay me you, something. I, I made you famous. <laughs> you know? I made you famous. Okay. Uh, for us to wrap up, um, what are we saying? Uh, we're keeping our eyes on for 2022 what are we keeping our eyes on for 2022 what are, what are you keeping your eyes on let me know uh but also what are we keeping our eyes out for 22 i'm definitely keeping my eyes out for more releases i guess i think vanco is going to be dropping something as well vanco yeah i think vanco because i will know the afro take me because that's that's the afro side is yeah. my playground yeah it's yeah, been yeah. my playground yeah so that that's that's a playground, I don't know, and I think Tandy Dry, when I last had her on the podcast, she was like, she's working on a project. Yeah. Which, by the way, shout out to Tandy Dry. I feel like not enough eyes are on are on her. I love Tandy Dry's uh, production as well, still. Production value, not, not a lot of eyes are on her, so shout out to her as well. Please. I enjoyed Iris. 70,000 followers. Yes, that's not enough eyes for her. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to do a Sol Penduga uh, uh, make G podcast thing now and say she's got her, but her, her EP is Iris her EP is what? Iris Iris yes what does that mean? it's the name of the EP the recent one no the one that came out in, I played this EP for you I introduced you to this EP Ingozi no it's not Ingozi is it Ingozi oh shit no the, the song is called Iris yeah Ingozi is the one that she played for me and I was like yes. God and literally I a week after when I did when yeah. I did um, this radio tour for my for my single, yeah. I was playing the hell yeah, out of yeah, that yeah, EP. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, so I put you on something. Now you did. Let you it, did. You let, put let, me on. Let, let it be known. You put me on. Let it be known. Tandy, he put yeah. me on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to your two Ingles. Yeah, he put me on. There's a song called Iris, you know, a very sensual song. Look into my iris. When you say no, that's not, not uh, uh, Iris is not on Ingles. <laughs> There's no vocal on Ingles, the EP. No, then the EP is called Iris. iris. That's how I was going the whole eye pan because uh, Iris, I guess the eye, and then. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, okay. it's fine. I I let uh, you know what's his name, Sol Penduga, be the king of pants. Uh, clearly, I'm not good at it. Yes, yeah, let him be the king of pants. Yeah, he's really dope at that. Okay, I think yeah. we should wrap up. Looking at yes. the time. Uh, so thank it's you. Your for show, it's your show, man. No, I don't know. Now I can go for another hour. I'm here. I'm having fun. No, dude, you said you have studio at two. So halala. I do have studio at two. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said let's wrap up the show thank you so much to the journalist dj for joining me on the podcast today um i appreciate all of your input all thank of it i you. really do thank and um for those of you who want to follow him what is your social media uh it's at the journalist dj so i don't have a personal account so i'm a magazine and a dj using the same platform at the journalist dj on all platforms awesome you know, tiktok is growing very well shout out to tiktok I struggle with that platform. That's yeah. that's not my platform. Clearly, no, I'm struggling. Just, just put snippets of your DJ sets on TikTok. Yeah, the thing about TikTok is that we, we like you don't have to be funny on the platform. On the platform, I just post like snippets of the interview. So even these interviews, like snippets that you like, maybe maybe I should there. have a side sessions TikTok. Yeah. You can do that, you know. Thing about it is that a lot of people want to be funny. Like I'm not a funny. I'm not person, funny. You know what I mean? Like I'm not funny intentionally, but apparently I'm funny unintentionally. Uh, yeah, you're yeah, um, bit funny. A little bit funny. <laughs> okay. You're a better DJ. I, I, I yeah. yeah. Then yeah. I am funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you're not kidding. <laughs> You're not kidding at all. And yes. it's fine. I'm not trying to be funny. That's yeah. the thing. I am, though, trying to be a great DJ. Yeah, which, yeah, I know you're a dope DJ. Uh, yeah. Funny, I'm not. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. yes, um, if you've got anything that you want to say, please don't forget, drop it down below. There's a lot that we talked about. Feel free to say anything that you want to say. Andy, let wait. I went to Andy Ile. Should I? Is that, is that like. I'm Andy Ile. Andy Ile, the journalist the DJ. Journalist DJ. Thank you again. Danko, and Danko. Danko. and that's a wrap. Mwah!